The MSI Meg Core Liquid S360 AIO is yet another component from MSI whose name is pretty hard for me to remember. But I will try my best to refer to it correctly as MSI Mag Core Liquid 360R AIO. No, wait. Hey everyone, Mukul here. So MSI sent this review unit to me and at first I was quite uninspired to test it seeing how expensive this AIO is as I'm pretty sure a lot of budget buyers and budget gamers and budget performance users wouldn't like the price of this AIO. But testing its thermal performance changed my perception of it, well to some extent. The AIO supports all the current AMD and Intel sockets. I just love how these bundled fans look. They just don't look sharp, they feel sharp. So keep a bunch of band-aids handy. MSI claims you can't hear them coming and I believe they are quite right about them because to hear even the faintest noise from them, you first have to power them on. I mean, still fans don't make any noise. And as per my hearing observation, these fans are one of the most silent fans I have tested recently on any of the 360 mm AIOs I have reviewed. So I have to give them the credit for pairing up one of the best fans from their catalog on this AIO. These are solid high performance fans and are already quite expensive. So pretty sure MSI chose to not implement any sort of RGB here to keep the cost as low as possible. Still that pricing is kind of an ouch. And these fans do have noise damping rubber pads across its corners. Because this AIO has been through a few of the reviewers, some of the fins on the radiator had bends on them. I really can't blame anyone for this as humans are just a sloppy breed. Of humans. The tubes are easily bendable and the sleeves are pretty typical too. I've seen them behave the same across many AIOs, expensive or cheap ones both, with such tearing across the corners. The pump is Acetec 7 generation pump, so one can expect the best of the best performance out of it. The pump has this whole plastic shell over it as a cover, which looks quite bulky and chunky, but it is quite light. It completely dismounts from the main pump and sticks back to the pump by the power of magnetism. But the strength isn't too strong and hence the shell can pop out easily. Well, it's a good thing that our PCs don't shake themselves like that booty. What booty? On this magnetic shell, there are more panels that stick to this shell and the magnetic strength of them is quite strong. So pulling them out needs a bit of an effort. The major benefit of this dismountable shell is that if you don't need the extra bulkiness, it provides in its overall design. You can remove it and still install a pump and a display that is fully functional. But it's quite evident that if you live in a moderately dusty environment, the dust will not only settle on the exterior shell glass, but it can also settle on the display under it. So there will always be two surfaces to wipe that damn dust off. But a good thing about the shell is that with it you have the flexibility to give directions to the many cables the pump throws out of it. And of course this pump has a fully functional 2.4 inch IPS display on it. Pretty sure all of you must know that by now. But I found it to be not super bright or too vibrant. Especially when I try to recall how bright the screen of the Kraken Z63 was when I reviewed it and the shell on top of it dims the brightness further down. Behind the display, a PCB is clearly visible with some more connectors on it. But due to the limited time with this AIO, I couldn't research what they are or what else they can do. And then under that PCB is a fan that MSI claims can help cool down the surrounding VRMs and components around it as this can drastically vary throughout the many different motherboards and different kind of setups. So I didn't personally test this and also because I didn't have much time with the AIO. And the base plate is quite flat. The installation process is quite simple as with all the Acetec pumps based AIOs. For an AMD chip, just install the AMD backplate first as I was testing it with the Ryzen 9 3900X. Choose the correct mount and screws for the AMD socket. The manual is pretty clear and to the point about what screws and mounts are for which socket. 
after screwing in the back plate on the back side of the motherboard and putting the correct bracket under the pump which will snap easily just put the pump over the screws and tighten the four screws over it alternatively as you can notice the outer shell wasn't stuck on the pump during this whole process but a word of caution that if you are planning to put the pump in this similar orientation that is when the tubes are facing towards the back side of the case and if you have tall memory modules then they might not be able to sit comfortably under the pump so you can just flip the shell horizontally and this problem will go away you can install the radiator either on the front of the case that suppose 360 mm radiators there or towards the upper end but wherever you choose to install them you can't obviously make these gorgeous fans visible easily for your eyes to admire them or as a matter of fact anyone else's eyes i mean everyone with eyes can see them if they want to see them if you are able to show them the three fan connectors can easily hook into the pump uh, daisy chain together which is pretty darn convenient and the other connector will go into the cpu fan header on the motherboard and the jusb port will go into one of the jusb header which must be on your motherboard too and the SATA power connector can be directly connected to the power supply well, yeah pretty straight to the point installation no hassles no fuss except for that shell which you have to take out and then put back in and in the process you would realize that that snappy effect that good feel factor effect isn't quite there with the shell of this pump of this AIO. Well this liquid cooler overall looks pretty neat and would love to be in a black themed case setup. The overall outlook of the setup is quite stealthy. The noticeable element would be the display on it and I feel I have shared enough about how it looks and how it performs. No, I didn't mention how it performs. Wait. Well, the MSI control software lets you do all the necessary stuff like importing those silly meme GIFs you want or it can allow you to display your CPU or GPU stats with the few presets it has. Few presets it has. These values will shuffle from one stat to another but you can only keep a maximum of five items here. Five items. There are also a few fan curve presets that can help you customize the radiator, the pump and the water block fan speeds. The silent mode is pretty silent, uh, maybe that's why it's called the silent mode and you would hardly hear the fans producing any sound in that mode. But I did all of my tests in the game mode because I wanted to churn out the maximum performance of this liquid cooler and of course you can customize each one of these parameters in the customize mode too. But the drawback with the fans connected to the pump is that you can't customize the fans with any third party software so you have to rely on the MSI software to do that the only other way is to not connect the fans to the pump which i'm pretty sure not many of you would want to do i mean i personally didn't want to do this so i didn't care about it well performance wise this is no doubt one of the best aios out there for the limited number of 360 mm aios i have tested the core liquid s360 fared the best out of the bunch in both average and maximum temperatures inside an open case with these sets of different sustained power loads i threw on it and as tested by many other veteran reviewers, Core Liquid S360's performance stands pretty close to the more expensive Kraken Z73 or the cheaper Lian Lee Galahad 360. So the premium for having a display on the pump is quite evident here, but MSI isn't the only brand that does so. NZXT for example does the same. But the Kraken series currently costs cheaper than MSI on Amazon US right now, but it's the opposite here in India and the Kraken will always cost more here for some reason and because of that reason I could never gather the guts to go out and buy the Z73 for my setup. So clearly MSI has better control over the pricing here for this specific AIO at least. But then with the Kraken we get twice the warranty so paying about 5000 rupees more or 60 US dollars more for a 2x warranty does sound more valuable to me personally. I emphasized on the word personally because I know a lot of people won't agree with me but that is if I'm going for an expensive display pump AIO like these because performance wise they are anyway quite close to each other with actually many other offerings that cost half the price but of course with no display slapped on the pump. So will I be recommending this AIO over the NZXT if you absolutely want a liquid cooler with a display over it? Well clearly this math is very subjective as the poles here represent quite a balanced result. Poles? 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 But I am someone who wouldn't mind paying the extra bucks for the way extra warranty on a component I own. But if you are someone who doesn't want to stick to an AIO for that many years and would be keener in trying out the new stuff that the future might bring in, well then saving more money for now doesn't sound that bad. Yes, this is definitely a cliffhanging conclusion. So if you end up choosing any of these AIOs and want to support my efforts on this video here, then you can buy from the affiliate links in the description below. So yeah, this is it humans. Take care and Mewbot out. Take care and not stay safe because I hope COVID is now finally over in many parts of the world.